Amazon sellers. So today we're going to try and provide you with a lot of substance of how you can help yourself when Amazon sends you an email that Amazon is doing an FBA inventory review. It's when Amazon itself wants information from you. It's not the result of a brand making a complaint against you. So Brianna, it looks like we have two different scenarios for the vast majority of sellers or all the sellers facing this notice. Absolutely. Number one, they have great sourcing documentation or number two, they don't. So let's teach the sellers watching this video how they should respond to this particular notice from Amazon, an FBA inventory review request when they have the sourcing documents. Alrighty, so best case scenario, you have all of your invoices, you retain them and you receive this request. What they want is your supplier information. They want the supplier's name, they want the email address, they want the address, they want the website, everything associated with the supplier, they want to review. The next thing they're going to want is your commercial invoices, any type of documents, packing list. They want anything to show that you purchased your items and paid for these items, got them sent to you from the supplier. And lastly, if you do have them, this is the perfect opportunity to submit any letters of authorization from the brand or even just to say that you're authorized to sell the specific ASIN in question. That's how you handle it if you do have documentation, you have sourcing information, you have the invoices that show that they're paid. And if you want to learn how to look at your invoices and documentation uh, like Amazon does, uh, just run a search either on YouTube or on our blog and you'll find specific, specific talks about what to look for on your invoices before you send it to Amazon so that you know whether or not there are any holes in your invoices or your documentation. Now, the second scenario is Amazon sends this awful notice to Amazon sellers. The Amazon seller watching this video receives it and they don't have sourcing documentation. So Brianna, how do we win these cases and what can the sellers do themselves to respond to this particular type of notice from Amazon when they don't have the sourcing documents? Okay, so I recently actually just had a success in a case like this. Uh, a client was sourcing from Home Depot but did not retain any form of an invoice. What I did was I went in and I tried to grab order confirmation details, payment confirmation details, anything that shows what the client purchased from where that they fully paid for it and received it. I also tried to make sure that I proved that the Amazon listing exactly matched it, the manufacturer information on the order details. I went in, I tried to attach images of the order confirmation, images of the manufacturer listing product information, um, and that just so happened to work. So in the event that you don't have any authentic commercial invoices, what you want to do is provide anything else to compensate for it. So let's talk about it a bit. So to confirm payment, practically every purchase is made with credit cards. Right. So if you need to show Amazon where you purchase your goods from and you don't have the receipts or, or invoices, go back and get your credit card statement, download it online, take screenshots of it. Even your email. Right now in this day and age, anything that you purchase online, there's typically something that goes to your email to confirm it. I gotta tell you something, that, that's dead on right. I bought products at Home Depot. I brought this crazy strong Dewalt drill because I was building a retaining wall and they immediately emailed me and then emailed me a second time to review the drill. And by the way, if you're doing any work and I'm not the handiest guy in the world, Dewalt drills are the only way to go. <laughs> and the wired ones, I mean, it was I was doing four by fours. Mm -hmm. Like I must have drilled holes in about 50 four by fours and it went right through it where my cheaper like uh, Black and Decker was like a struggle to get through it. That so, is the beauty of ordering online these days. Right now they send you an email once you uh, ordered something, they send you an email once it's been shipped, and then they follow up with you, like you said, once it's been delivered. So if Amazon has any question whether or not you actually ordered something from a specific spot and whether or not you received it, those are things that can help them confirm the fact that you actually did. Right. The second thing Brianna talked about was making sure that things match up. It could be matching the documents up to the purchase. It could also be matching the products up to what's in a brick and mortar store and why this could be like a time drain and a pain in the neck. Uh, if you need to go back to the store and take pictures matching your products to where you purchase them from and to other products on the shelves, you know, it's a really good persuasive way to show Amazon staff in India um, that your goods are 1000% authentic. Absolutely. And again, the use of images, right? Yes. The saying is a picture is worth a thousand words is 100% true, especially when dealing with Amazon. So we've shifted over the years of doing this, of inserting pictures right into the plan of action, 
or attaching them as an attachment when you can. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use either way, but we have success using both, and so you really wanna do what you think is gonna be more persuasive because every plan of action is nothing more um, than an, an exercise in persuasive writing. You are trying to persuade these people on the screen who I have personally interviewed, and this is just a, a minute portion of the thousands or tens of thousands of people in India who read plans of action. You're just trying to persuade them to reactivate your account or reactivate your listing. Yes. And, and these are great ways to do that, you know, on your own.